Welcome back to the channel and uh, back to Sunny Dunny, Dunbar. So, uh, first of all, a quick noise check and I'll we'll get back to you. So I've messed up with this film because I was supposed to be filming fitting brake pads front and rear and I fitted the front and then somehow switched off and moved the camera and never switched on for the rear pads. So apologies for that because it would have been a good film as I've actually discovered one Achilles heel with the Classic 350 is the rear wheel putting it back in. I've only done it three times now and every time including today I find it a bit of a bother lining everything up. But that's what it is, lining up the axle to all the spacers and stuff. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, so rewind to the beginning of the film and we'll do the front pads. Um, and it's actually the same as the rear, it's just you've got to take the back wheel axle out to drop the wheel to get the caliper mount off. Um, but you know they're easy to work on these things um, so one thing I did learn and do this when you do your brake pads is pull out the split pin for the retainer pin for the pads knock it out when the caliper is still attached rather than trying to do it with the caliper floating about all over the place uh, as you'll see in this film so you will learn something from watching my films because a lot of this is trial and error because there, is, there isn't actually any British films on this English speaking, they're all Indian and I've tried to watch them and well, it's a language barrier for how to do stuff, you know um, so I guess that's if you're a, one of the higher mileage owners of these bikes you're not getting a garage service, which I'm not now I'm doing it all myself, which is why I bought one of these then um, they're relying on films by other folk to work out how to do this stuff. So there's the pin knocked out. Um, so the front pads look about half worn, so just clean them up. Uh, get them for spares because sometimes you do lose the pads, they can break up or whatever. Uh, so some old pads kept as spares is not a bad thing. So just give the inside the caliper and the pistons a good blast of brake cleaner and a wee wipe clean. And then once that's all evaporated up and dried I'll put some copper grease on there. So the pistons will need pushed in to put new pads in for the clearances and if you can't push them in with your hands then that's a good sign that the pistons are seized which you'll find with old pads. You shouldn't find that on a new bike. Um, so I'll push them in with my hands and we'll just put in the Corrodo. Nothing like spending money eh, and good quality stuff. Get them out and we'll couple of the backs of these before we put them in. So a tin of copper grease like this should last you for years and just get an old paintbrush, cut down the handle of it and use that for buying the stuff. Works a treat. As you can see the camera's in the wrong place. <laughs> but I'm just uh, coating inside the caliper with that. And I'll do the outside of the pads. Um, and then it helps them just sort of slightly stick to the piston and the outside of the calipers. Uh, but it does supposedly stop them squealing. Uh, it certainly does on mountain bikes, I know that from doing more brick pads on mountain bikes in the last 20 years than motorbikes. 
So with the brake pads, just holding them in, uh, just push that um, retaining pin in, carefully with a hammer. Now you might need to um, push it in a, a millimetre or so further with a centre punch, so you can get your um, R clip retaining pin in. So they, there you go, there's the pads placed, I'm just opening up with that centre punch. So you get uh, pad retaining gadgets or like little class things you can slide in there and that would hold them out onto the piston edges and keep it all sweet. So now I'm just going to get the centre pin in. Again I'm not filming this very well. Now maybe this is why there's no English speaking videos that actually really show well or any language <laughs> videos that show good pattern because you need someone else with a camera moving around beside you when you're doing this I guess. So I'm trying my best, might not be what's uh, needed but anyway, trying my best. So we've got that centre pin in now so that's that done. So with that um, securing split pin in, just keep the pads opened up and slide them onto the brake disc and reattach the mount. Just reattach the two mounting bolts and screw them in the best you can and then just nip them up. Now there's all torque settings for all these things. I didn't bother with all that, I never have. Spark plug tight, keep telling folk that, that's all you have to do. Nip them up with a tiny then eighth or turn or something. We nip after that and that's tight enough. And job done. Um, and they will drag a little bit being new. Um, for those that are so thick. Um, you're going to have to bed them in as well. And all you have to do with new pads is not go out and hammer them. Uh, just drag them slightly at slow speeds. Then let them cool down. Because you don't want to glaze the brake pad. Um, so sadly, um, I've just finished doing the back. Which was a faff. I have to say, getting that uh, back wheel realigned, what I did was I loosened the wheel nut, dragged the axle out just to halfway thinking I'd get the caliper out, but I had to pull it right out and drop the wheel down onto the ground. And then the right hand, uh, this side, spacer fell out and I couldn't get it realigned. It was a real faff. And I think it's just practice with these things, you know? So anyway, I'm just going to clean these old pads, I'll keep them in spares, if I do have a, a pad separate, I've got some spares then, you know, put it on. Um, so there you go, made like a gun. So um, down to the petrol station and fill up for next week and I'm treating it to some E5. Um, so we've done 99 miles on £10 of petrol. So I'm trying to work out the sums, but we're not quite doing the 100 mile at the gallon doing that. We're getting about 90, but short journeys, you know, going to work, commuting and stuff. So anyway, take the bike down around town and just, with no one behind me, just drag the brakes for a few seconds at a time and just break the pads in. With mountain bikes, what we do is we actually squirt water on them and it breaks them in a lot quicker. So I guess if you went out in the rain and did it, it'd be the same. But anyway, the film's going to be on this now, because uh, <laughs> there's not much footage for missing the rear pads, sorry, but that's all there is to it really. So the pads which were in the bike I could have left for another for the rest of the summer. Um, but I'm way up north next week and I'll probably be hitting seven to nine hundred miles 
um, round trip, so I thought, new pads in, then I'm not going to run out of brake pads, put it that way. Um, and a few folk have already updated their pads to for all those um, from the stock pads and said they're a lot better. I find I don't actually use my brakes as much as most folk do. I just use my gears with my bike and use engine braking. And I think that's how you have to ride these bikes. It's not about sitting in top gear pulling along. You've got to use the gears, get up and down the gearbox. They definitely like that sort of riding. So here's a good example of why you should bed your brakes in before you ride. This guy and me, I'd like. <laughs> He was going first sort of thing, so the brake stopped me there okay, so that was good. Um, so yeah, just some gentle braking, nothing too hard that will um, heat them and glaze them. But yeah, it seemed to be okay. So I'm just going off to see if Barry is about, uh, he's one man in his boat with Lindsay B. Um, I just got a new pick hat from him, black, to wear to work. Um, now that we're in work black work clothing so he's anchored down here just now but he must be out in the boat he's had a lot of engine problems but uh, look up one man on his boat um, and amazing youtube channel which should have so many more views than it does fishing on the east coast of scotland being such a big thing compared to say well it's all 350s um, to me another thought these are big things but in the scale of stuff they're small fry on youtube and this is something that I'm actually discovering having my monetized channel. We all seem to earn like 40, 50, 60 quid a month and you can't seem to get above that. Well, other folks get these crazy views and you start to think it's actually all a bit of a con. And is it worth doing? Well, I think it's worth doing making films if you're interested and enjoy them. And I've kind of like come to a a sort of dead end in my cycling um, because of the lack of interest in the films but the more bike films have got massive interest and every film I do the likes I get and the comments I like I get I've never had in my cycling films and it inspires you to keep going out and people are coming along all the time that are new to like these bikes just bought one they're running it in and they want to know do you need to change anything, stuff like that. And I guess to look up to folk who are putting miles on them now, like I have, and other guys that are, we're all sort of over 5,000 miles now with these bikes. Um, and uh, yeah, so as you say, as you've seen, sorry, with the brake pads, well, you've never seen the rear, because um, I've switched the camera on, but they're, it's all trial and error a bit, and uh, it ain't rocket science though. I mean, they've made these bikes so you can just fit, fix them yourself, you know? And that's why I bought one. Um, and I love this bike more than I've ever had it. And I said in the previous video, I'll either trade this one in for another one or I'll probably buy a second, which I think I will. And I'll have a shiny chrome one for summer and the army rat bike for winter. I think that's the way to go. But that's a year or two years away yet. There's still a lot of miles to do on this bike yet. So, um, you can hear I've still got a bloody cough. It'll disappear eventually. I stopped here for a photo and then realised my phone is in the house. So there'll not be any photos. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks for watching again. <laughs> it wasn't really useful, this film, because I forgot to switch the camera on, but you know that's the way it goes so thanks again and see you again soon bye for now